You are watching WhatsApp Punta Cana with Christy Mayo, una americana italiana en la República Dominicana since 2013. A teacher at heart, but her curiosity has sparked new opportunities. Director, businesswoman, humanitarian, talk show host. La curiosa directora has decided to become the student. Go behind the scenes to get a closer look at what this country is all about. And share is here with you. So, if you love everything Dominicana, stay tuned. This is WhatsApp Punta Cana with Christy Mayo. On today's show, I bring you Ria's story. Ria is now a leadership speaker, trainer, and author of the books Fearfully and Wonderfully Me, Bridges Out of the Past, From Ashes to Beauty, Leadership Gems, just to name a few. However, her story and how she came to be where she is today did not start with such great optimism. From 12 to 19 years of age, she was sexually abused and trafficked by her father. She became a victim of her circumstances, lacked self-confidence, and was unable to help herself or anyone else. With moments where she wanted to take her own life because she thought she would never get out of her situation, this story is all too common and many women who have gone through this as young girls are unable to feel a sense of self-worth. I bring you today Ria's story so that you or someone you know who may be going through the same tragedy can look to her for inner strength and guidance to help you get out of the situation you are in, as well for those who think this may be happening to someone around you to help you discover some of the signs and signals that this may be happening to somebody that you know. So I would like to welcome Ria to today's show. Welcome Ria to What's Up Punta Cana. Um, I'm so happy to have you here uh, with me today. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Christy. Thanks for having me. It's just a, a pleasure to be here. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I, I came across your story and I want to start by kind of going with where you are today because you are uh, a leadership speaker, you're a trainer, you're an uh, author, you've published multiple different books. And so I want to kind of start with where you are today. So when we kind of rewind to uh, to your, your past, uh, people can see like, wow. Um, and, and how you have created the life that you have today. So what is your mission and your vision of, of what you're doing, um, at this moment as a trainer and a speaker and an author? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, you know, what I, what I really am on a mission to, to do is to empower women to help them develop their leadership skills, increase their influence and maximize their results personally and professionally. And really my passion for that is driven by the fact that the majority of our success, in fact, according to research, as much as 87% of our success in life is determined by our character right? Our character is who we are. It's how we do what we do. And only 10 to 13% of our success in life and our influence with other people is determined by competency. Competency is our skills, our technical knowledge, our ability to do a job. Right now, that's important. We need that 10 to 13% that, that skills and abilities, but it's how we do it that determines our success in life and our influence with other people, right? Think of this from a personal perspective. I guarantee you, you carry your medical doctor graduated medical school, right? That's competency. He better have. But right. it's how he or she makes you feel that matters. Mm -hmm. And so I get excited about that because, you know, when you look at that, it's absolutely easy to see a character drive success, but nobody ever 
taught me about, you know, developing my character and how that could be so important to success. I spent years going to college learning competencies, but no one ever talks about character. And I think it's powerful, particularly for women. Mm -hmm. I think it's really important what you said there, because a lot of times, like you said, we are taught growing up all of the things that, you know, what we should know for what the career that we want to go into, all of this knowledge based on uh, a certain content area, but not the one that's most important. And I, I think, and maybe you'll agree with me that especially now at this point in time, when you and I were growing up, we had to have those face-to-face -face conversations and we couldn't just, you know, mm. write it or text it or <laughs> chat it, right? And so when you look at that, I think that's really important as one of the skills that's necessary for young people today um, is that, you know, what you said, that if, if only 10 to 13% is your content knowledge, that's a really important um, skill that needs to be built um, and so what do you find that women or anybody that comes to you for, for your advice on it, what do you find that you tell them to do first? You know, the, the first and, and the most important thing, and, and I don't know that it's even first because it's something you do continually, right? But the foundational thing is, as I think we have to develop ourselves, you know, just be intentional about daily personal and professional growth. And what I mean by that is there again, just doing something daily to grow my character and develop it. You know, we absolutely have to develop our skills, sure. Because, you know, the thing about it is, you think of any time in life when you were mad or sad or upset or frustrated, I guarantee you, you were mad or sad or upset or frustrated because you didn't have enough influence in that situation, mm -hmm. right? You wanted to influence someone to do something or you wanted to influence someone to not do something and you couldn't. And that's where the frustration comes in. And so I'm one of those people who I thought leadership was for the boss or the owner of a company. But leadership is influence. It's the ability to influence people. And every single one of us want to influence people. We don't want to just influence people at work, although that's important. How many of us want to influence our kids to make better choices in life? Same principles apply. And so, but what it comes down to is if I'm not intentional about developing those leadership skills, those skills of influence and my character that helps me do that more effectively, mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's just like moving to a foreign country and not learning the language. It's really difficult to influence people if you don't learn the language. Leadership is the language of people. So the first thing I suggest women or men or, or anybody, I, I say, you know what, be intentional about developing those skills of influence in your character. Yes, I think that's, that's really important. Um, I think that, so if you were to, in, in developing those skills would, I guess, um, being able to uh, have conversation Mm, absolutely one of, one of those skills um i'm imagining and how to have that conversation in a i don't want to say positive or negative way but in a way that you know you can get your point across or that you can be understood as well as the other person be understood i think what you just said there is important christy because you know communication and the ability to connect with people and have dialogue is critical for influence but here's the thing, and it kind of goes back to if you've ever heard of the seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey. Yes. Habit number five is seek first to understand and then be understood. And it's an incredibly powerful tool when it comes to communication, effective communication and influence. And yet most of us want to speak first, right? We want to be understood and then work on understanding the person. If we could develop ourselves and our character to just say, you know what? Hey, I'm willing to listen first. How, how powerful that is from an influence perspective. And, and most of the time, if we're willing to listen first, we can, we can figure the rest out, right? Because if we listen first, the other person feels understood. Mm -hmm. Even if we don't agree with their perspective, they feel like we've heard them. We understand. We may not agree, but, but we understand. And so that validates them. And so it says, hey, you, you care about me enough to, to listen. And so most of the time, that's the power of con connection and communication. And uh, the words that we say are not as important as, as how we say it. 
Right. And I think that's very true also as well in, in terms of understanding why people do what they do and creating tolerance and in, in a world where there's a lot of intolerance, mm. especially at this moment where as if people would listen and, and say, and say, well, you know, why do they think that way? You know, you're not just born that way. You, you think that way for a reason, whether it be passed down from generation to generation or whatever it might be, trying to understand um, where they're coming from, especially when it's something that's detrimental or harmful to other people or society and try and teach them that there might be another way as opposed to what they automatically think at this at that moment and really listening. And I think that's such an incredible and important skill that is very, um, is not used as often as it should be today in, in listening uh, what other people have to say so that we can all understand why something is happening as opposed to just automatically reacting mm -hmm. and saying, oh, well, they're just absurd or illogical or crazy or whatever, you know, label they be, they may be called, but there's usually a reason for that. And, um, I think that that's really, really, really important. Like you said, and listen and understand what other, what other people are saying. That's yeah. And you know, women, women tend to be, uh, by nature, a little more relationship oriented. And, and that's not a feminist statement. It's just a fact. Women tend to be a little more nurturing as a general rule. Um, and that can be an incredible strength in influencing people. Now, it can also work to our detriment if we let that um, rule the relationship, right? But, but it can be an incredible strength. And I think that's one of the, the things that I've learned is that women have a lot of influence. I mean, men, men do too. There can be great men who are leaders. But women tend to influence in a different way and with a different style. Um, but we, we have incredible influence. But when we develop it, it can be huge. But there again, it comes down to I've got to work on me first. Mm -hmm. um, I love a quote by Michael Josephson who said, you don't have to be sick to get better, mm -hmm. right? There's nothing wrong with any of us. You think of the number one athlete in any sport in the world today, they're practicing mm -hmm. to get better. There's nothing wrong with that athlete. They're just working to get better and they better be because number two is out working to get better. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with us. But we don't have to be sick to get better, to grow and improve. And when we change ourselves, our world changes. Yeah, that is a fantastic quote. Because if you think about it, no matter what it is, whether you're talking to adults, whether you're talking to young people who are struggling in something, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You know, you people might be good at one thing, but even, you know, I was just doing this the whole quick reading thing. And, you know, we all know how to read, but you can still even get better at reading, you know, even no matter at what age you are. And, and, and I think that's so important to realize that practice in anything just allows you to get better. And like you said, it's not that you're, you're sick or you can't do something. You just practice makes everything, you know, everything better, good or bad. So I, I really like that. That's a great quote. Um, so now, you came from um, from a very difficult childhood. Your your story, and um, as I came across your story, you had originally um, held it back for a great many years, and then decided to come out with it um, after hearing uh, something that Les Brown had said. Mm -hmm. I, I love Les Brown as well. He's quite inspirational. Yes. And I think in, it's so important that you came out with this because um, there are so many girls, women who have gone through this same scenario and same situation that you have and that are going through it today or have gone through it and don't know what to do to move mm -hmm. on. And so I'd like you to to share to share that story with with um, with the people, if you wouldn't mind, and 
so that we can understand because looking at you today and thinking about what you went through, um, it is quite a, a road and a journey of, of, you know, overcoming and of strength and of creating a life in which you want to, to help others with the same type of, of situation. So, um, tell us a little bit about what happened to you, uh, as a child. Um, sure. So um, I was a victim of sexual abuse. Uh, my father started sexually abusing me when I was 12 years old. And it progressed as I got older, and he got much bolder. And by the time I was 17, he was regularly having sex with me and would bargain with me, you know, for sexual favors in exchange for something like a night out with my friends. And um he always said he wanted to give me the the ultimate experience in life in his words and that looked like a lot of different things sometimes it was taking nude photographs of me sometimes it was tying me up and, and beating me black and blue with a riding crop and and then as i got even older it progressed to later trafficking me um, to men he would meet on the internet and there were, you know, there were times that, that life was almost not worth living. And I thought about it. I thought about a, a tub of warm water and a razor blade. Because going through that situation and just not having any hope that it would ever get better, right? I couldn't see a, a potential way out. I couldn't see that the future would be much different. And that's where we start to lose hope is when we, when we think that today's is good, you know, it's never going to get any better. Um, and you know, you're right. It's and my, my story is not, unfortunately not that uncommon for men and, and women, girls and boys, but, but my story is not everybody's story. But what I've realized is that every single one of us face adversity in life. If you haven't yet, you will, it, it's coming and we can take what life gives us and be bitter about it or better because of it. And um, when I was 19, I met my, I call him my knight in a shiny Camaro. And um, 20 plus years <laughs> later, we've long since traded the car, but I kept him. I, I married him. And, you know, he was the person that really gave me the courage to leave and to stay gone. And, you know, I left home at 19. I didn't have a job. I didn't have any money. I didn't have a high school diploma. I'd never been to school. I'd been homeschooled my, my whole life. And I had a duffel bag and a couple pillowcases of clothes and uh, a whole lot of whole lot of faith, right? A whole lot of hope. And um, you know, when I left that situation, I didn't want pe I didn't talk about it beyond a few um, family members and, and close friends. I didn't talk about what happened to me because I didn't want people to see me as a victim, right? I thought, you know what? I'll just lock up what happened to me in the closet and throw away the key and I don't want to go back I don't want to look back I'm I, you know I'm I'm tough I'm a survivor I'm just going to push forward but that's not really healing right because until I was ready to own my story it owned me and shoving it up in a closet doesn't mean we really heal from the the grief and the the shame and the and the pain of that and it wasn't until 2013, um, more than 13 years after I left home, I, when I heard Les Brown speak, and he's speaking to a whole room full of people. And he said, you have a story to tell and someone needs to hear your story and you can help that person. And I thought, I've got a story to tell, but I don't want to tell it. I worked really hard to forget it. Um, but you know, it took me a couple of months to realize that if I share my story and I help someone, then that gives me purpose for having come through that, right? It gives me the, the why, because I think a lot of times when we go through adversity, our natural human response is to question, why me? Why did I have to go through this? This is painful. This is awful. This is bad. And realizing and sharing my story, I turned what was a horrible, bad thing into something positive because I don't share my story so people will feel sorry for me. I share my story so that every other person who's going through a tough time can look at me and say, if she can overcome what she went through, so can I, right? right? If I can bring people that, that hope to say, you know what, what happens to us affects us and it influences us. There's no doubt. I'm a different woman today because of what I went through. What happens to us influences us, but it doesn't determine us. 
And that's our, our greatest freedom in life is realizing that we don't have to make bad choices the rest of our life because of something that we encountered or experienced, right? We, we all start somewhere and, you know, I didn't get a head start in life, but, but look at where I'm at now. I mean, it's a lot of transformation. It's a lot of growth and I didn't get here by accident, but just moving forward, like one step at a time, one step at a time. Yes. And. And I think I remember when we had when we had spoken prior to to doing the interview, you know, you had mentioned how you know this was kind of your calling, your your divine purpose, your mm-hmm. um, you know your faith is what got you um, got you through this. However, in hindsight and looking at that, it was something that your dad also used kind of as a as a pawn in the same time to make you believe that it's what God wanted and so how are you able to decipher kind of between between the two because I know a lot of times people tend to try and control and manipulate other people through a God or religious perspective when we know that that's not true and that's not the case. Mm. Um, how do you feel that you were able to, to say, you know, I know that this is, this is not God's will. This didn't happen because this is what he ultimately wanted to happen to me. How were you able as a child, as a, as a, as a teenager, able to decipher between the two then and not have hate in your heart? Mm. Um, that's a good question. And I, it almost might be two different questions. So let me speak to the first part first. Um, I, I I didn't have a hate and resentment after I left. Um, I, I couldn't have articulated that. I couldn't have told you that in so many words. But I knew intuitively that holding on to hate and bitterness was only going to pull me down. Mm-hmm. Right. And so what I determined when I left was that person is is not going to have one single minute more of my happiness and I'm not going to give them that power. I'm not going to give somebody else the remote control to my emotional channel, you know. Um, But there again, I couldn't have I couldn't have told you that. I just knew it intuitively and I just said, you know what, I'm going to put it behind me. Um, But I don't think I really was able to then get to the point of reconciling God's purpose and God's plan with my pain. Mm -hmm. And I like to say now God doesn't cause the pain in our lives, but he can use it. Right. But we have to be willing to, to let that happen. And I don't think I was able to get to that point until I started sharing my story because in sharing my story, you know, there again, until I was willing to own it, it owned me and until I was willing to say yes it it's there and it's painful and it's hurt you know it hurts it's left a scar but until we're willing to do that and go through the healing process I I don't think it's I don't think we really can accept that you know bad things happen and God can use them for good because you know there again we tend to doubt God we tend to question why and that's perfectly human right our it's it's and, you know, Stephen Covey talks about the difference between being proactive and reactive. And to me, the way I understand that is we're human, right? We all have emotions and feelings. And when bad things happen, they hurt. They're painful. It's a trial. And it's natural to have emotions and feelings. But we don't have to make our decisions and our choices and live our life based on those emotions in the moment. Right. We can be reactive to the emotions in the moment, but that doesn't always serve us well. I know I'm not the only one who's said something or done something in the heat of the moment and then later gone, man, I wish I hadn't have done that. Right. Right. But we're human. Those emotions are there. There's nothing wrong with that. But being proactive is recognizing that those feelings of hurt or grief or anger are there, but I don't have to to respond based on those. I can look long term and say, pause and let me choose a better response for myself and I, there again it, that took me quite a few years to to get to the point of saying okay I can I can choose how I respond to this terrible thing 
and I, I don't think I got there until I started sharing my story. I don't think I was able to um, until I started sharing my story. Right, right. Now, as you're growing up and all of this is happening around you, so to speak, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have asked you what, what did, did nobody know? How, you know, you said you were homeschooled, so that is one way to be able to, to kind of, um, to not have to deal with the everyday people. You had friends, um, but again, nobody really knew at that moment what, what was going, what was going on. And what do you think it was that, that went from like in your younger years as a child that you said it started at 12, that was kind of like the, the tipping point, I guess, to having you um, come to, to, to be that role? Was it maybe maturity or um, that, that your dad kind of, cause you, as you had, you said that he, it was when you were 12 that it had started, correct? Mm-hmm. So, and, and my reasoning for this is that I know that a lot of young people out there that are going through this or experiencing it and hiding it and ashamed of it, um, maybe not knowing what to do. Were there things in your mind that you wanted to do at that point in time that you were afraid? I'm just trying to to make that connection for perhaps girls that are going through that situation now. What would you tell them? Hmm. So, you know, number one, you know, I always knew, you know, we, we, have an innate sense of this isn't right right and I I knew that and at some point made that realization that that this is not right this is not normal right when you're when you when you grow up in that type of an environment and particularly with a lot of psychological manipulation it took me some time to to get to that point and realize just how how bad my situation was and, uh, you know, I was desperate to get out and I ran away from home more than once. And, you know, he, dad would always find me and, and come get me. And, you know, I didn't have a lot of options. I didn't have any, any way to get out really. Um, and, and there again, carrying so much fear and, and shame, the most difficult thing for people who've never been in that environment is to understand, well, well, why didn't you leave? You know, why didn't you leave? You know, at that point I was 19. Um, and there's so much emotional um, manipulation that goes on in a situation like that, that it's really difficult to comprehend if you have, you know, if you haven't experienced it. It's the same question we ask a lot of times in domestic violence cases. Right. Why doesn't she leave? Why, you know, um, and it, I think what it comes down to is that when you've gone through something like that, you know, I had absolutely no sense of self-worth mm -hmm. or self-love because there was that, you know, the world tells us or holds up an image of saying, this is what a, a good person is, or this is what a, you know, what a virtuous person is. And, you know, for someone who's going through a victim like that, particularly with um, a, a sexual crime, there's that disconnect between what the world says and that feeling of shame. You know, shame is, guilt is I made a mistake. Shame is I am the mistake, right? There must be something wrong with me if this terrible thing keeps happening to me. It must be, it must be my fault. It must be something I did. It must be that I'm, you know, there's something wrong with me. And so I think until you're able to help that victim realize that, that no, just because something terrible happens doesn't mean that you are terrible mm -hmm. and that's really a mindset shift and and you know we can we can try to help that person we can try to help them build their self-worth and self-esteem at the end of the day I, I think there are only three factors that that determine it the first is that realization that I control that right that realization that I can be proactive in response to what happens to me and no one else can do that for me um, it's powerful when we realize we control our emotions, 
but we still have to do it. You know, it's, it's tough to do. It says easy, harder to do. Absolutely. But that's, that's the first thing. And the second is that um, we have to have a strategy for moving forward. You know, hope isn't a strategy. We got to have hope to get a strategy, right? We've got to figure out how am I going to either physically get out of the situation right now? That's the first step. But then mentally, how can I move forward? How can I heal and move past that? And the third thing that, that helps um, determine that is our social, our social support. Um, we as people form some sense of ourselves, some part of our self image based on the people around us, right? We get some sense of our identity from our environment as we grow up, our parents or grandparents or teachers or whatever. And when we go through trauma, that sense of self is just shattered and we have to recreate it. Mm -hmm. And having the right supportive people can be very powerful in helping us do that. And having the wrong people can also just, just tear us down. Absolutely. No, and that's correct. And I think the other, the other key piece to that too is because a lot of people, like you said, who have not been in that situation or scenario, find it easy to judge. Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing too, to remember is that you're, you're, you're not even an adult yet. And you are, you grew up in, um, you know, I think in more of a, you know, uh, a solitude, solitude kind of, mm -hmm. that's not the word I'm looking for, but yeah, you know what I mean? Like isolated, isolated. Thank you. An isolated situation where you, you knew basically what, you grew up with your family and, and you were in uh, more of an isolated, isolated area and an isolated situation. And I think the important thing too to remember is that you are dealing with it from a perspective of also only what you, you knew. Mm -hmm. And as a teenager, a lot of times, uh, you know, I often uh, have heard before, well, they, they sh even though they're, they're young, they should still know the difference between right and wrong. Well, yeah, but like you also said, where are you going to go? What are you going to do? And I think a lot of times as well, we forget that that's your, that's sometimes it's all that some of these kids know. And like you said, you tried to run away, but again, where were you going to go? And, and what were you going to do? And, and how are you going to do that? And and I think uh, that you are absolutely correct in saying that the greatest part about what, what you experience is that you can overcome that. Mm -hmm. You can move past that. You can heal from that. And, yeah, and absolutely. And the other thing, Christy, I think, too, it's easy to, you know, particularly with um, an abusive situation or child abuse situation or... Um, particularly when it's a family member, perhaps even more so, is that uh, that abuser will prey on the victim and, you know, you don't want to get me in trouble, do you, you know, and that, and that really, you know, when it's somebody, a, a child or teenager has faith in and, and loves and cares for, you know, it's very tough to disconnect that and yeah, you know, that, that victim doesn't want the person to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, at, at that, that level. And so it's, it's tough to disconnect that, particularly when you're, especially when you're young, I think that that's really difficult to, to, to be able to separate that and say, you know what, this, even so it, it, there, sometimes there are consequences for our actions and you need to, to go through the consequences for these actions. They're wrong. Right. Right. You know, and I, I think that's, that's really important what you, what you just said. And, um, it's not that easy, and, and especially when it when it is a parent. Mm. That's what you've known all your life, and you might not know what you might want to leave or not be in that situation, but you don't know what the what else there is out there. So you tend to main, remain in in the situation. Now you said that you had run away a couple times, and and finally, you you broke free. But those few times, your dad came and he found you and was able to get you to come back. Because also, I think 
at that point, you didn't know where to go or what to do. Is that correct? Yeah. And, and there again, it's just, like you said, you kind of touched on that. And that's interesting because I talked about that on a podcast recently. You know, as bad as my situation was, it was a known situation. And I think as humans, we have a fear of the unknown, right? It's, it's not knowing the future. If the future looks different, it's scary. Like we, we don't know. And so it's, it's as bad as the situation was, it, it was something I knew. And to step out from that into the unknown took an incredible amount uh, of of being willing to face that fear and say, okay, I don't know what's gonna happen, but I'm gonna risk it, I'm gonna chance it. And for me, that catalyst was was Mac, my my now husband of, you know, well, we've been together more than 20 years. And because I, I needed that person who believed in me, who cared about me for me, who was willing to, to say, you know what, this isn't right. It's like, you don't have to, you know, come with me, but you can't go back home. This situation is, is bad. And, um, that really, he, you know, he gave me the, the courage to, to do that and to stay, you know, to stay away. Um, so it's easy for me there again, I'm incredibly blessed and fortunate because there are people who prey on victims who leave one situation and then they end up somewhere with someone who's just as bad in perhaps a different way. And, you know, God certainly blessed me. Somebody once told me that they said, uh, God's going to give you a double measure. I said, you don't understand. He already has. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, I, there again, I, I think I'm just incredibly blessed and I can look back at that, my transition and my transformation. And for me, I'm, it's easy to see God's hand in my life and say, you know what, there again, God didn't cause that situation in my life, but he is using it in incredible ways. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so now, you know, coming back to light of, of what you have, how you have transformed your life. And it's kind of like, you know, you did name one of your books, if I recall correctly, Beauty for Ashes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's really a significant uh, statement in, you know, for, for people of faith. And, uh, and so what, what does that mean to you? Well, the, the term is uh, in the Bible. So, you know, that's where it came, comes from. But, you know, it, the Bible verse specifically talks about God will, will give, take our ashes and give us beauty for it. And I think a lot of times we expect that to happen literally, you know, and, and I don't think that's what it means. I think what it means a lot of times is that we receive something much more beautiful, but a lot of times it doesn't look like what we expect. You know, from, from my perspective, it would be easy to say, you know, God, just take this emotional pain away, you know, just take that away from me, right? That would be beautiful. Mm -hmm. Take these ashes of my, of my past and get rid of them and give me, you know, some, something else in return. But instead, I, you know, I still have, you know, I still have, a, a, a I'm still affected emotionally by what I went through. Right. But the beauty in this case is being able to take that and, and share openly with other victims of abuse or, or people, um, women and girls who've been trafficked and give them hope because I can stand in front of them today and they go, wow, that could be me. You know, a lot of them want to write a book or they want to be a therapist and help others. And so the, the beauty that I think in this perspective is that there again, something that could be horrible and, and terrible you know, it's choosing to view it in a, in a, a different light. I use the analogy of, you know, how a, a, a photographer with a very fancy camera has this ginormous lens, you know, and they, when they're taking a picture, they can focus on the, the foreground mm -hmm. and the background would be fuzzy, or they could focus on the background and the foreground would yeah. be fuzzy. It's the same elements in the, in the picture, in the frame, just choosing what we focus on. And, you know, all of us have adversity and pain and, and hardship at some point. And it's learning that we don't ignore the problems and they don't go away. We're right. just choosing to shift and, and focus on the blessings that we have. And that's what gives us the ability to be resilient. Right. And I think that sometimes, a lot of times, you know, we look at these different situations that we may deem as negative in our lives but yet, 
at that moment, we think that it's, you know, something horrible or, oh my gosh, why is this happening to me? And, you know, a pastor that I listen to, he often says, it's not a set, it's not a set, it's not a setback, it's a set up. Mm. If that didn't happen to you, if that negative situation, quote unquote negative, if that, um, what you perceive at that moment as a negative situation didn't happen to you, then something better may not have necessarily come along that you see down the road. So it's kind of like, um, I know certain things are a little bit less horrific in, in experiences than others. However, this, like, like you said, your scenario has allowed you to help probably many, many, many more people than you know. And your example of strength and and courage in doing this allows other young girls or women to say, you know what, if she can, I can too. And so without that experience, then, and unfortunately that was, that happened to you, but without that experience, you wouldn't necessarily be the person that you are today. Mm -hmm. Very true. You're exactly right, Christy. And so, I mean, and, and sometimes we're used as, as vehicles to spread a word, to spread a message that unfortunately what took us to get to that point isn't necessarily uh, a good road, but being able to help others in afterwards or getting others to feel good or be better for themselves is, is, is the great is a great thing to do. And I'm sure that that is powerful to you. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm incredibly blessed. Every day is a gift. So now let's go back and talk about just uh, kind of to wrap things up here a little bit. You, um, you talk about leadership and the power of influence, which we had talked about at the beginning. Um, And we kind of talked about those skills, but let's say, Someone is going through a difficult struggle right now, like many are going through difficult struggles at this moment. Um, What would you say or tell them is a first step for them to kind of take away today to say, you know, they say, wow, she can do it, I can do it, but where do I go from here? Mm -hmm. What would you say? Um, the first thing is, is getting rid of what I call the victim mindset, right? And it's how Elrod said, who said, the moment I take ownership for everything in my life is the moment I can change anything in my life. Now, what that means is not that, that we cause bad things to happen in our lives a lot of the times, right? We don't choose our circumstances. We cannot control a lot of times the things that happen. Bad things just happen, Um, But there again, I've got to take my responsibility for how I respond, right? That's a mindset shift that says X, Y, Z happened. How am I going to respond? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, a lot of times we let what happens to us hold us back. We create a victim mindset and we use it as an excuse or a limiting belief for why we can't go do, be, and have what we want in life. And it's easy, right? It's easy to blame someone or something else because we don't have to do anything to fix it, right? As long as I'm blaming someone or something else for where I'm at in this moment, I don't have to do anything to change it. It's somebody else's fault. It's something else's fault. So what I have to take responsibility for are the choices that I make and and choosing my response. If I'm responsible, I am response-able, Now I'm responsible for the choices that I make. And so, no, I don't get to to control everything that happens, but I always control me and saying, okay, you know, if I focus on what I can do instead of what I cannot do, then I'll find that I can do more of it. But the very first step is saying, I'm not going to be the the victim here. Things happen. I'm going to move past that. I just have to figure out how. Uh, and there again, it's easier to say than, than do, um, yes, but getting, it is. it is, go ahead. 
but like, it, as you said, but that's one, you know, it's easier to say than do, but at least saying it, I think is a, is a starting point for, for many right yeah. now. Um, yeah. and, and I think that like you, like you say, you know, it, it is easier said than done, but it's one, that's one step forward. Mm. I use the analogy of we all get hungry, right? You cannot control the fact that you get hungry. Right but you control what you put in your mouth in response to being hungry. That's a choice that we make. Now that's just one simple analogy. Um, But uh, you know, we choose our attitude either consciously or not. We choose, you know, how, what do we do when we get up in the morning? Do we choose to to think of positive affirmations? Do we choose to start our day in in a positive routine? Do we choose habits that don't serve us well to cope or numb emotional pain? But then long term, they tend to just compound over time. Good habits compound or bad habits compound. We choose our habits. And, uh, you know, it's Eleanor Roosevelt who said, I am who I am today because of the choices that I made yesterday. Well, that means that who you want to be tomorrow is based on the choices that you're making today. And it's powerful because we realize that we can make better choices at any moment. And we don't have to get it right 100% of the time. You just have to just just focus on this moment. Right. And focus on the small successes because a lot of times people end up, you know, saying, I'm going to do this. But but it's just such a big this that instead of saying, okay, well, how am I going to get to that? Let's take one small thing. And every, every step forward sometimes has a step backwards. And I think being forgiving of forgiving yourself mm-hmm. and saying I'm human and I can make a mistake and that happens and you know but ultimately looking at the good uh what you're trying to do to make your life better um and focusing on those small achievements as they come along will also be helpful in, in what in what you do um, and I love one of the things that, that you, that one of the things that I read that you had said, and it's actually a quote from, from Mark Twain, mm-hmm. uh, that I never heard before. And so I, I really, um, I, I loved it. And it, it was that, um, two of your greatest days is the day you were born and the day we discover why. Full, because when we discover our passion. It's our greatest joy. You know, our purpose, our greatest joy is fulfilling that purpose. But I guarantee you, when you discover your purpose in life, it's always in some way going to be connected to helping someone else. And so tell me about your most recent book. And we'll end with that. Uh, Fearfully and Wonderfully Me. And um, it just came out. Is that correct? It did. Um, I have been wanting to write this book for a long time. And I used the excuse that I was traveling and speaking and busy. And so I told someone about March 1st, I said, in fact, I said it from the stage. I said, I'm done with making an excuse about that book. I'm going to get my laptop and I'm going to work in a hotel room if I have to, you know, I'm just going to make that happen. And then COVID hit two weeks later and I had four months to sit at home and write a book. So, you know, choosing to be positive about my extra time, I said, you know what, I've, it's a gift. I'm going to write this book. Um, but it really is, is what I wish I had known, um, over my journey of transformation, the things I've learned that if I could go back and tell someone, you know, there again, the same principles apply, whether you're male or female, I just tend to focus on from a woman's perspective because it's, it's one I know, but this is what I would tell someone. This is a, this is a stepping into your potential, overcoming your past, owning your story, owning your yesterday, owning your today, and then creating and owning your tomorrow. That's wonderful. It's amazing. Uh, You are amazing. And I'm so blessed that you agreed to do this interview with me to be able to to share this with people that listen to, to my show. And I will look forward to seeing all the future work that you do as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christy. Take care. 
from Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome to Fearfully and Wonderfully Me, a podcast for women on leadership and life skills with Rhea Story. Rhea shares powerful life and leadership principles, helping you maximize your potential and become the woman God created you to be. Welcome to 360 Influence, a life and leadership success podcast for women. Today, I want to share with you, um, I received a message from one of my many connections on LinkedIn. I've got probably, gosh, almost 30,000 followers on LinkedIn. So I get a lot of messages from social media. And I love to interact with people and be able to add value with people. So I really try to just, you know, sit down every morning and answer those messages. And this morning, I got a message from um, a connection, fairly recent connection. And she sent me a message and said, hey, Rhea, I found out your story too nights ago at midnight. I was having one of those days and I was searching for answers. And she goes on to explain a little bit about her situation. And she finishes with reading your story about limiting beliefs just gave me hope and a little more strength. Thank you. So it was a great way to start my morning as I read um, this morning that that my podcast and my blog from last week was able to add value and, and encourage her and some of the challenges. So I sent her a message back and then I thought, you know what? Challenge is something that we all face in life. You know, whether you're dealing with an aging parent or um, even someone in your family who's got cancer, or maybe maybe you're going through a, a tough divorce, or maybe you're sick yourself. You know, whatever we're facing in life, we're all going to be facing challenges and adversities. And it's just simply a fact that life is is hard. And what I'm so proud about this young lady that reached out to me is that she's facing a challenge personally and professionally, but she's searching actively for information and skills to equip herself. And, you know, I think it really comes down to we've got to be intentional about equipping ourselves. We've got to be learning. We've got to be reading or growing in some way. Maybe if reading's not your thing, maybe it's listening to podcasts or watching TEDx talks. There's so many ways out there now for us to be able to develop ourselves, to develop our minds. And every single thing that we learn gives us another tool in our toolbox so that when we face the next challenging situation or the next difficult um, situation in life, we've got a new tool, a new skill that we can pull out of the toolbox and apply to that situation. So proactive people, you know, we, we have to be proactive. Proactive is responding based on what we truly value rather than just the emotions of the moment. So if we're proactive, it means intentionally developing ourselves, even just a little bit. You know, you don't have to sit down and read a whole book today. But if you'll just, you know, learn one little nugget every single day, one little gem of wisdom will help equip you for the next challenge in life. And there, there are going to be more challenges. Um, there's going to be failures. There's going to be difficult situations. One of my friends gave me um, a beautiful, it's called a mantra bracelet. And there's a little card in, in there with it. And it says, never be afraid of failure and know that it is another stepping stone. And, you know, I think so often in life we look at challenges or obstacles or failures and they they discourage us because we feel like we're not successful. But every single one can just be a stepping stone. It's one of the reasons I'm so passionate about reading um, and able in order to develop myself. Um, You know, I try to read an average of one book a week on personal growth or leadership because I know life is tough and I know there's going to be challenges. And so I'm, I'm always trying to, to learn and, and grow myself so that I've got more tools in my toolbox. Not just so that I can help my own situation, but also so that I can pass on those nuggets um, to my listeners on my podcast or readers of my blog. So I just finished Marianne Williamson's um, book yesterday. Her book, uh, Return to Love, Reflections on the Principles of A Course in Miracles. And I, one of the, I got a lot of quotes out of here, but one of the good quotes that I really love to share with you on this topic of um, equipping ourselves to meet challenges and failures is she says, and I quote, There is nothing we have been through or seen or done that cannot be used to make our lives more valuable now. We can grow from any experience and we can transcend 
any experience. And you know, that was powerful for me because again, a lot of times we look at failures as roadblocks and we allow them to discourage us or or turn us around. And really, we feel like if we face enough of those, that we just simply feel like giving up altogether. But when we learn to look at them as opportunities to grow from them, then it's simply a question of what can I learn from this? And if we find we're, we're still struggling with the, the answer to that question, then we need to be intentional about growing ourselves personally, professionally. You know, just be intentional about reading a quote every day. Um, you don't have to read a whole book. Uh, like I do every week, but maybe just read a page a day, just being intentional about growing your skill set, because that's really where equipping ourselves come from. And really, we're the only ones that can do it. You know, it's it's kind of like getting fit uh, physically. You know, nobody can do it for you. Um, when, I, when I teach my group fitness classes, I always tell my, my class members, I'm like, you know what, I, I wish I could do it for you. But This growing ourselves either personally or professionally or even physically, you know, we've got to do it because we've got to grow from the experience itself. And we've got to take the responsibility to be able to empower ourselves. So I just wanted to to share those thoughts with you this morning. I hope the rest of your week is amazing. And if it's not, then the question is, what can we do to change that? How can we make it an amazing life, an amazing day, an amazing week. Until next time. I want to thank you all for tuning in to tonight's episode of What's Up Punta Cana with Chris Taggio. I hope you enjoyed the show. A special thanks to Ria Story for sharing with us um, what had happened to her growing up and how she overcome and overcame this experience to be a light to so many people um, in today's world. And I think a lot of times we have to remember that sometimes when we seem to go through or experience a difficult situation, there is good that can come out of it. So be hopeful and have faith and know that there are people out there that can help, that want to help. If you find yourself in a situation like Rhea's, in a situation of domestic violence, in a situation that you think is wrong or you think somebody else is in that type of a situation, please contact the authorities. Um, I know that in the United States, there are hotlines um, um, for um, sexual abuse and for human trafficking. And so if you have any idea, any doubt that you think that something is happening to a child, to a loved one, please report it. Don't let uh, something happen that could have been looked at sooner um, and help people because sometimes they just don't know how to get out of the situation that they're in, especially if they're children, especially if they're teenagers. Um, As you'll recall, you know, back in May, I had Maria Trusa on the show and she was um, only nine years old when she was brutally raped um, by a man in the Dominican Republic. Um, where she was born and where she's from. But yet her story, like Rhea's story, is one of overcoming that and now taking that situation and instead of being a victim, using that strength, that courage to tell their story and to help others that have gone through, that are going through it, and to bring awareness to people out there to try and help and bring hope and stop these um, horrific acts. So thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, uh, you can tune in every Friday night on Punta Ana Hits Radio um, at 8 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time. 
as well. You can always see the recorded interviews um, on YouTube channel, What's Up Punta Cana with Christy Maggio. So until next time, I hope you have a wonderful week and enjoy. Take care. God bless.